Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Listen to Dave's Radar Detector Beep While He Drives Around and Talks About Poker. I mean, uh, Low Stakes Crusher. Um, I've mentioned in a couple of different uh, videos here already uh, about limping. And uh, I threaten you with the prospect of a limping video. This is it. Don't limp. So first of all, and I probably mentioned this before, I'm still working on getting my little uh, area to make videos set up, and uh, I promise every single video, is a little crooked here, isn't going to be me driving around talking to you. But for now, i get that a little better. Yeah, that's better. For now, um, that's kind of what I'm limited to, and uh, so it'll, it'll get better, I promise. But I didn't want to let time go by. We need to talk about limping. Um, as you know, by now, we're here to talk about live low stakes play. One, two, one, three, and two, five is sort of getting to mid, people call it, but I, I, it's still mostly, I still call that low stakes. But particularly in one, two, and one, three, limping is rampant. It's like limpomania. Now, if you're new to poker and you're still learning terminology, limping means if, let's say you're in a one, two game, and you're under the gun. That's the very next to the big blind. And you look at your cards and you decide that what you're going to do is just call that $2 blind. That's limping. You didn't raise. You just limped in for the $2 or if it's one three game, $3, whatever. And you can also consider it to be limping, even though the dynamics are a bit different. If there's a straddle on, like let's say it's a one two game and there's a $5 straddle. And with that $5 straddle, you look down. I'm sorry, I don't mean with it. Like, you're not straddling, but there is a straddle. And you decide you're going to play the hand, so you just call that $5. You don't raise. Still limping, even though the dynamics are different. Well, there is a time and a place where limping can be okay. However, you play in these games like I do, you know that it is a huge limp fest all the time. And generally speaking, limping is just setting money on fire. People in these games limp way, 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 way too much. And uh, we're here to talk about why that is and then what you can do about it. Okay, I got my microphone fixed. Uh, limping presents uh, many problems, right? And I'm going to go through now uh, all the reasons. Well, I mean, actually not all. There's even more reasons not to do it, but a pile of reasons, okay? So the idea, right, is that you've got a hand and you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, this is a, I, I wanna see a flop with this hand because I could make a big flop here and smash it and like get make a big pot and win a bunch of money with it. But it's on its own right now, it's not good enough to raise, so I'm just gonna limp and call the $2 or the $3, right? That's the plan. Problems with the plan. First of all, many things have to come together, right, in order for this plan to work. Now, if, if you limp and um, someone after you raises, that puts you in a bad position because you just said it wasn't strong enough to raise. Well, if it's not strong enough to raise, it's certainly not strong enough to call a raise, right? So oftentimes, you'll just be blasted off the hand, you've put a couple dollars in, you got raised, and now you're folding. You just, that, that money just got set on fire and thrown into the muck. That's one problem. The next problem is most games that we're all playing in are raked games. That is to say that the house takes some money out of the pot um, for their own, you know, to, they take it out of the pot for, to, for how they, they make money, right? So when you're when you're limping in these games, your 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 sort of plan is predicated on the idea that we're going to limp in. It'll be a, who knows how many people will limp in. The money will be in there, and um, if I make a big hand, then I have a chance to win all that money. That's why it's worth doing this. Well, guess what? You don't have a chance to win all that money because some of it's going to be raked out. So your, your idea that you have odds to put $2 in there, which is already wrong anyway, but um, apart from that, 
is is wrong because the amount you're imagining you might win that's in there isn't actually the, the amount because they're going to rake some out which makes that two dollars or three dollars an extra bad investment just another problem is the rake now problem number three in order for uh, this plan of yours to come to fruition let's say you've limped and you didn't get blasted off it by a ray so that's good and um you get to see a flop and you miss. Well, you miss a lot, right? You don't smash flops very often. And so now, once again, if there's any action, you didn't make anything with your marginal hand. You're, you're not going to certainly just start blasting off and, like, and bluffing with nothing, right, typically. And so you limp, you see a flop, you missed it, you fold. You limp, you see a flop, you missed it, you fold. And it goes on like this all night long. Um, sometimes a whole session will go by and you never smash the flop. Sometimes multiple sessions of this will go by and you never smash the flop, right? So every time you're throwing that $2, $3, whatever it is in there, you're just letting it on fire, right? You're, you, you, you're, you threw your couple bucks in, you saw the flop, you missed it, you, you dumped the hand. And that's money that just goes away. You're, never, you're not seeing that again, right? It's gone. And... Um, this over time is very costly so there's another problem and we're not done yet okay now sometimes you're going to sort of hit the flop where you didn't smash it and make some giant combo draw or flop the nuts or anything like that but you got something and now you're in a position where you have a marginal hand let's say let's just make up one let's say you've got nine seven suited and that's what you limped with and that's actually people limp with way worse than that but let's say that's what you did your goal of course is to flop the uh you know flop a, a flush or flop a flush draw flop a combo draw where you have a straight draw flush draw flop two pair trips etc smash it right that's what you're trying to do smash it well let's say that doesn't happen you got your nine seven and the flop comes king i don't know let's say king queen um, nine with two spades and you have nine seven of hearts okay well what are you going to do now you've got a piece of it are you going to just decide that's not enough and just fold as if you entirely missed are you going to try to get fancy and put yourself in difficult spots with bottom pair and a not very good kicker with very little equity as far and when i say equity for the turn i'm what i mean is you don't have, there's not very many good turns for you that are gonna make your hand a lot better. You don't have a flush draw. You don't have a straight draw right now. You have, you maybe have backdoor draws, right? But even so, they're backdoor draws to the to bottom of the straight with your nine, um, right? Bad situation. So pretty much that, once again, that money has been lit on fire. Okay, more problems. Let's say you do smash the flop. You, um, I don't know, with your 9-7, you, uh, let's say you flopped uh, two pair. And um, you're all going, oh, look, finally, I've done it. I've limped and I've flopped my two pair. Time to start raking in the money. Well, not so fast because another thing has to go right. So, so far we're at, not only do you have to not get raised off of it, pre-flop, right? We talked about that. If you limp and someone raises, you got to throw it away because it wasn't very good. Um, and by the way, this is just an example. I'm not suggesting that if you were to play 9-7 and you got raised, you would always fold that hand. It's just like we're just talking about limping. So, well, let's not dig too deep of a rabbit hole. Um, but, yeah, so first of all, if you limp, you've got to avoid getting blasted off of it by a raise and you had to give up. That's one thing. You have to remember you're losing some of the money to the rake. That's not good, right? Um, you've got to have a flop that actually smashes you to the point where it's a good enough hand that you can make money with it and the, but there's more also someone else has to be in the hand that has a big enough hand on their own that they're willing to put money in the pot so that you can make this dream giant pot that you've been trying to win with your limps all night right someone else has to be in there to give you money uh, with a hand that's good but not better than your your say your two pair right and uh, so there again, we have a limiting factor that you're not going to smash it very often at all. And when you do, you're still not done. Someone else has to have a big hand. So, so here, this is, you're starting to see the problem, right? So much has to go right in order for your limp 
to bear fruit, that when you add up all those circumstances together, it, they can't bear enough fruit in order to be profitable over time, right? That, in a nutshell, is why you should not limp. Now, I've talked about, uh, in a couple other videos, I know we're just starting out here, but I've mentioned a few times um, that we, you know, my whole mission here is for us to take certain situations that we might find ourselves in or spots that we're not too clear on what the best thing is to do and do better, right? And that's different from um, studying uh, game theory, optimal play in all the spots. You know, we can talk, we can make a three hour long video about pre-flop ranges and um, position versus stack size and rate bet sizing, etc. We're not doing all of that. We're just here, we're talking about raising, I mean, uh, limping, and how tonight can you do better than if, if you're one of the a person, and there's lots of you, right? This is not meant to be criticism in a negative way. We're just trying to get better. So if you limp a lot, um, which is to say, you know, more than very rarely, um, here's a way that you can start to learn to do better. And this is what I suggest to people when, they're, when we're learning, is that when you look at your hand uh, pre-flop, if it isn't good enough that you're willing to raise with it, and, there's, and the pot hasn't been opened to a raise yet, right? Let's say you're, I don't know, in middle position, and it's just one, two, and there's no straddle, and it just goes fold, 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 and now it's on you. And you look at your hand. If it isn't good enough to raise, fold. That's it. Don't limp. Uh, for all the reasons we just talked about. If it's not good enough to raise, just let it go. Uh, you're not giving up. You just get it in your head. You're not giving up opportunity. You are saving money. That's what you're doing. You're fixing this leak that you had, which was throwing in $2 with these types of hands all night long and hardly ever having it come to fruition, right? Um, so, yeah, just do that. Fold it. And uh, that is by definition, and we've already had one video about ranges, we're gonna work more on ranges in the future, but what you've done here is tighten your pre-flop range, right? When you participate, you're gonna have a better hand, and when that is the case, you have more chance to win the pot, more chance that, you're, uh, that you have real value in your hand, and you're not just throwing in some chips to set them on fire. So tonight when you play, try that. Don't limp with those hands. If they're not good enough to raise, let them go. Um, and like I said, is this the optimal advice? Like, do high stakes crushing pros, is that their whole thought process? I look at my hand, it's not quite good enough to, it's not in my, you know, like tight range of opening premium hands, therefore fold, no. There, there's all, like I said, there's, we could go on down the deepest of rabbit holes about learning strategy uh, for pre-flop action. And if you really want to dig in, then you should do that for sure. Um, but today, if you're a limper, that's how, that's a good first step to stopping. Just do that. Now, one last thing. Does all of this mean that there is no particular, uh, or there, there's no appropriate place for limping? No, it does not mean that. And I will give you an example of something you can do today that isn't terrible. Uh, with regard to limping, and I'm going to include overcalling in there, meaning let's say it's 1-2 and someone makes it 12 and it goes call, call, call the 12, right? So you can either flatting that, we call that overcalling when other people are calling a raise, and you can do that too, or limping either way. And that is, if you are in late position, there's a, there's a few conditions that are important. Later position, um, you don't have to be on the button, but late-ish, I'll say, position, um, or in the big blind, if you have small pocket pairs, let's say fives and below, and it goes like that, like limp, limp, limp. Now this is the condition we have, if you're in a later position and you have one of these types of hands, another condition. And your game is such that you, there is not a tremendous threat of being three bet. Um, in that case, it's okay to limp with those hands with a goal of uh, set mining, right? You wanted to see a flop cheap and try to flop a set, and then go for the gold if you're if you're able to if, if you're able to bring that to fruition, right? That's a specific spot 
where uh, limping is okay and um, the, the thing is there, if you have these smaller pairs, it's not too tempting to get into a complicated situation where you're trying to get fancy. Like if you have pocket fours and the flop comes out, you know, I don't know, king jack eight and someone bets and someone else raises, you're not going to be tempted with your pocket fours to try to get fancy and like three bet and get to the pie. You're just going to let it go, right? You're, you're, that's, the, that's why they call it set mining pretty much. If you don't make a set, you, you just get rid of it and, and move on to the next opportunity, right? That, that's it. So um, that is an okay place today. If you're, if you're going to go play tonight and you're going to work on this thing where uh, this idea that you're going to quit all that limping, that excessive limping you've been doing, and you're going to muck hands that you can't raise with, um, that's a, a way that you can do some limping and it's not so terrible. And again, is, is it optimal to do that every single time that I just mentioned? No, it's not optimal every time, but it isn't terrible. And, um, and it can definitely bear fruit with, without requiring that you're constantly limping and just setting all those $2 on fire. And by the way, in addition, one last quick thing about that, that late position limping with pairs, you can also do that in, uh, in pots with hands that uh, play well multi-way pre-flop. And I'm talking about like middle suited connector type hands, uh, six, seven suited, seven, eight suited, um, hands that can really flop a lot of equity against uh, other people's holdings. Um, it can also be, be handled that way. The thing about that is in, in contrast to set mining though, when you do that with suited connectors, you remember, let's say you have seven, eight suited, you're not trying to just flop a seven and get fancy. You're trying to smash it and, and stack somebody pretty much. Um, but those types of hands play very well multi-way because if there's multi-way action on a flop in which you flop a lot of equity, let's say you flop open-ended with a backdoor flush draw, you have lots of equity against almost anything that your opponents can be holding in that case, right? Excuse me. So in a multi-way pot, the, the pot tends to get bigger. And what that means is you have better odds for, your, for you to put money in the pot. That's why they play better multi-way. Um, so yeah, quit all that limping. If you can't raise with it, fold it, try that tonight. Go ahead and limp with some smaller pairs in later position or suited connector type hands that play well multi, uh, multi-way post-flop and uh, give it a go. But quit setting all that money on fire. Thank you very much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all coming and watching these videos. They're gonna get better. I'm gonna work on it, I promise. Um, I know that it's probably already getting old, these annoying bad audio driving around videos where I ramble at you. I'm gonna get better, I'm working on it. I haven't had time for the home studio. I didn't wanna ignore you all who have taken the time to watch the video. So thanks very much, like and subscribe, and see you next time. Go do some low stakes crushing.